Hi there. This is the Sabag trap in the Nydorf and it's named after French woman GM and national champion Marie Sabag from her game against Dmitry Kokarev in 2008. E4 and Sicilian C5, Knight F3, D6. White plays D4 and Black captures. C takes D4, Knight takes D4. Knight F6, Knight C3 and A6. The Nidorf and the old classic line with Bishop G5. We've explored lines with um, Knight to uh, D7. Now we're looking at the old uh, main line E6 met by F4 and now H6. Black could have played Bishop E7 or Queen B6 but we're looking now at this interesting move H6. The Bishop drops back to H5 retaining the pin on the knight on f6 and now bishop e7 developing and breaking the pin queen f3 is met by knight bd7 and castles and queen c7 and bishop e2 b5 now is met by white trying to seize the initiative with a trade first on f6 and after knight takes on f6 then e5 White's really trying to gain advantage now, targeting the rook on a8, hitting the knight, well aware that black's going to defend with bishop b7 hitting the queen. But the queen slides over to g3 and keeping an eye on g7 at the same time. So black will trade on e5 and after f takes on e5 hitting the knight. This position has occurred many times at a tournament level and the knight can drop back to d7. I see knight to e4 has also been tried. And knight to d5 seems to be a popular choice. So we're looking at the knight d5 line. But this does allow white to play a common sacrificial idea here, which I'm sure black was well aware of. Knight takes on e6. Lovely little temporary piece sacrifice, because after f takes e6, that opens up this diagonal for the queen to move into g6, hitting the king. So queen g6 is met by king d7. And now bishop g4, natural move, pinning, or not pinning, but um, yes, it is. It's in fact pinning the pawn on e6. And the threat now is going to be knight takes on d5. So Black can continue, queen takes on e5. He's not far from equality here. Even allowing knight takes on d5. Because rather than playing bishop takes now on d5, black should play queen g5 with slight advantage for white. Queen g5 would be check. Forcing a swap of queens and black certainly can continue, can march on. If instead bishop takes on d5, it appears here that white is winning. White will continue with another sacrifice. Rook takes on d5. Because black has to recapture with a queen as the pawn on e6 is pinned. So after queen takes on d5, the other rook comes into d1. And that's skewering the queen and the king together, rook d1. Black will get something after bishop g5 check. Sending the king to b1. And queen takes on d1, bishop takes on d1. We're not far from material equality, but white is definitely going to win. Black's king is stranded there in the center. The game will continue with bishop f6 by black to defend g7. And white could continue with bishop f3 with advantage. Sabag, in her game against Kokorev, played queen f7, check. And after king d6, now bishop f3 hitting the rook on a8 and when the rook moves to b8 then queen a7 is hitting the pawn on a6 with clear advantage here for white. White should go on to win as did Sabag in her game. So this has been the Sabag trap in the Nidorf. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.